Hello and welcome. So today, what we'll be doing is we're going to be going through the Arch Linux configuration walkthrough. This is a continuation of the previous video, which was the Arch Linux installation walkthrough. So let's go through the process. As you can see on the screen here, we have our Proxmox, our hypervisor, and we have our virtual machine, which is Arch Main, located right here. Perfect. Uh, well, we also have another resource present, which is called the Arch Linux installation guide from our previous video. But we are basically done with um, the bulk of it. We just need to go down to post installation and select general requirements. Uh, or sorry, general recommendations. Okay, so under system administration, we need to go through users and groups. We need to create another user, one that isn't root because using it for prolonged periods of time is insecure, especially under SSH. So take note of that. Uh, and it is time to create the new account or the new user. Uh, right here we have users and groups. Hashtag user management, please click on the following. Okay, and we're going to be using this command here. Okay, so we're gonna be adding a user. We're gonna be giving them the home directory, which is what they need to function basically. Uh, it's populated with a lot of the basics, so you need it. Uh, additional groups, we're going to provide the wheel group so that it can do pseudo stuff. I'll show you that in a moment, and also uh, shell. This is only if you want to add something other than bash. Bash is the uh, sort of terminal language that you can utilize. There are other ones like ZSH or FSH, which have extended functionality. Uh, I believe sy syntax highlighting built in and also uh, autocomplete, things of that nature. Uh, but I think bash also has this built in now as well but you just need to um you need to add this functionality in okay well now that we've done that uh let's go through the process so here here's here's our terminal our virtual machine and we're going to run the command so user add hyphen m for creating the home directory which is what we require we also need to do the uh hyphen capital g this gives us the wheel access that we require to do pseudo commands and things. And then hyphen S if you want to add a different uh, shell language, but I'm gonna skip over that because I just wanna stick with bash, we'll keep it simple. And then we'll uh, give ourselves a, a username. So I'm going to use this right here, which is N. And we've apparently already created it. So that will create it for you. Uh, I'm not going to delete it and recreate it, so that's that. Uh, now, I need to do something else. Uh, that's that. We also need to change the password. So what you need to do next is you need to pass WD. You need to put your username afterwards to change the password, uh, which is located right over pass WD. Here. So after you add the user, you need to change the password. So uh, n, I'm going to give it a new password. Let me just make sure I get this password correct. Okay, cool. And now that that's done, we can log in in a moment. Uh, let me just go backwards. Okay, so we need to set up sudo. So if you're unaware, I don't think it's on this machine. It's not, therefore we need to install it. We need to confirm we have an internet connection. So ping archlinux.org, no connection presently. So what we need to do is we need to utilize one of the network packages we installed earlier. So those are either DHCPCD or it is network manager. These are installed, so you need to either use one of these commands. So systemctl start uh, network manager, like so, 
or it is DHCPCD, like that. I'm going to be using Network Manager. Personal preference, no real difference, except uh, this has more functionality than DHCPCD from memory. So um, now, if we ping uh, archlinux.org, we get the external IP address, and we also get some responses. Come on. Give me some responses. Yes, okay, so we have responses. We're good to go now. Okay, so now that we've done that, we need to install sudo. How I do this is pacman hyphen capital S sudo. This will give us higher priv to be able to run commands that are primarily for root. Uh, Okay, so now how you set up sudo is you need to use this command here. So it's vim or it's nano, your choice. I prefer vim, vim slash etc slash sudoers. Now that we're here, we're looking for the words uh, uncomment to allow members of the group wheel to execute any command. This is what we're doing. I press delete. There on the hashtag, I uncommented that. Uh, you can also make it so that it doesn't require a password. I generally do not uh, uncomment this. So feel free to do that if you're a bit lazier. <laughs> uh, next, I'm going to press escape, colon, W to save, Q to quit. Oh, W to save, Q to quit, exclamation mark. Okay, that's done. And now that we've done that, uh, we're going to swap over. So it's SU, switch user, SU, and then it's N, and we're there. So you may be prompted to put in a password, but since we went from root, I don't think you need to worry about that. Uh, but in case you do, uh, you can escape, and you can also log in as yourself and you're the you're in the same place so you can either log in press uh, type exit or you can uh, switch user su to the uh, to the relevant account okay so now that we've done that we need to see if sudo is working so we've added this user to the wheel group sudo uh, pacman syu this updates everything this is uh, essentially giving you higher privilege and it's warning you about that. So input your password and it's updating. Therefore, you have no issues. So it's updating your packages and your repo. Okay, so I'm going to install these updates. And just to be clear, you might want to do this before you proceed. So. Uh, update all your relevant packages. A reboot might also be handy, but I'm going to skip that for this instance. Uh, so users and groups, basically done. Good work there. Uh, security is next. So let me just make sure if there's anything here. Uh, everything pretty much checks out. You can change, use, you can change mod permissions here. Uh, that's pretty much simple. Um, you have a bunch of applications here for for adding security. Your personal preference, so feel free to go through that. Uh, we've also done privilege privilege escalation. Uh, sudo is what we used. You can also use do as, which is less bloated. It's uh, substantially smaller, hence less bloated uh, than sudo. So, yeah, uh, that's a good second option, good alternative. I. I would probably use this in this day and age, but sudo is more user friendly. Okay, so exit out of that. Security's done. Uh, service management, system D. I basically went through a quick command for you. Um, it was something that will show up in a moment. Come on, make the image. Uh, 
Okay, where where we need to be now. Okay, so system CTL start and then the process which was network manager. This is a command to start a service. Um, but there are, are all, there are also other things you can utilize as well. Uh, system CTL status network manager. This shows you uh, if the application's running, what the recent logs are, uh, and if, if anything's happened. Uh, yeah, basically the basics. So that's that. Uh, there's also system CTL stop network manager. This stops the process from running. You can also enable, so it runs at startup. Enable network manager. You can also disable, which disables it from startup and stops the service overall from running. But these are neither here nor there. That's system CTL for you, or uh, system D, uh, which handles a lot of the background services and things of that nature. So feel free to go further into that. But I think we, uh, we covered the gist of it. Yeah. Okay. So that's that system maintenance. Um, this is how you check logs. You can also view it by, by going to, uh, this area here, which is CD slash far log. There's logs in here. Feel free to go through that as well. Uh, this is all pretty self-explanatory. Package caching, cleaning the file system. I don't typically do this that often, so go th go in go through that in your own time if you'd like. But that's that. So one system administration done. We're going on to two packet management, uh, package management. So let's see. We're going to work with Pacman, which is our package manager, and this is how you install applications and do do a lot of updating of your system. So you need to become familiar with this, of course. Uh, what I like to do is I like to uh, visit this file here, which is vim slash etc slash pacman.conf. And I like to read over this, get an understanding of everything. But I also like to add color to my terminal. So there should be like a color command here. Uh, color. I think it's not in this one, but uh, there's also other other uh, re repositories that you can you can get. Uh, Multilib allows you to uh, to run 32-bit applications on your system. Uh, feel free to untick this if you want things like Steam or or. Uh, yeah, mainly Steam, I guess, if you're a gamer. You'd, you'd probably want to uh, open up Multilib, uncomment this. So feel free to do that in your own time. Oh, here it is right here, color. So this allows you to have color in your terminal while you're updating things. Uh, and if we write and quit. Oh. oh, it doesn't like that. Whoops, I need to sudo. Sudo. Uh, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, gives you the previous command as escalated. So this way you won't run into any issues. And there you go. And when we sudo pacman hyphen SYU, capital SYU, we get color. So that's pretty cool. Uh, spices up the terminal just a little bit. Yes, so if you're planning to run things like Steam, you'll likely need to uncomment that multi-lib repository. Uh, mirrors, you can edit that as well. Uh, Arch build system. Um, this is for package builds and things. Make package. Uh, yeah, so there are things you can run. Um, it was, so I also like to download I think it's make package. No, uh, pseudo pacman s, uh, it was like make, there we go. So you need make to do something in a moment. We're going to be installing 
or uh, gaining access to the Arch user repository. It's one of the biggest package repositories in all of Linux, and it is supported pretty heavily by the community, uh, and it is very popular. So what I recommend is that you gain access to this. How you do this is you need to install make. You also need to install uh, sudo pacman hyphen capital S. There is a thing called uh, fake root, I think it is, yes. You'll also need sudo pacman hyphen S capital S. Uh, there is git. Yep, that's another one. And I think that should be the majority of it. Okay, so now that we've done that, you need to follow this link here, the Arch user repository link. And then <clears throat> you're going to need to view this thing called yay. I don't think it's here. Uh, web interface, let me see. Yay. AUR helpers. Okay, so now that we're here, uh, there's this really popular uh, AUR helper, which is how you would uh, reach into the Arch user repository to grab applications out and do a lot of other things. So this is the one that I use personally called Yay. It's really popular and it's, uh, it's going well. So let's uh, use this. Uh, this here, yes, okay. So <clears throat> how you install yay is by doing the following. Uh, you need to basically write this command. So utilizing git, git clone, uh, https colon forward slash forward slash aur arch linux dot org slash yay dot git. This gets it, oh, sudo exclamation mark, exclamation mark. There we go there. Okay, so now that we're, we're, now that we're where we need to be, uh, we need to actually move that file. Uh, make sure you're not in var slash log. Uh, actually, let me just, I'll make this quick. So, yay, sudo. Okay, so. Let me go back a step. We're back home now. So print working directory, PWD. We're back home where we need to be. And now we try again. So it's uh, it's git clone https colon forward slash forward slash aur dot archlinux dot org slash yay dot git. And now we just cd, we change directory, cd, into yay, and we're here. What we, need to do, what we need to do now is we need to make package, I think it's hyphen si. This is going to build everything. Uh, we're building it from scratch, okay. And this uh, yay will be essentially a replacement for uh, Pac-Man. You'll just need to write the command yay, and that should update your repositories. Uh, you can you can also use the command yay to install uh, packages. Okay, so we're missing GCC, so that's the compiler that we're missing. Um, it's sudo ca Pac-Man hyphen capital S GCC. Okay, and with that, we can proceed. Okay, so let's try again. It is make package hyphen si. Come on. This shouldn't take too long. Usually about a minute or two. Um, 
Okay, so, yes. Okay, so now that we've done that, we've set up yay, which is our AUR helper. And this allows us to access the AUR, the Arch user repository. So, yay updates all our packages similar to what uh, sudo pacman hyphen capital syu does. Same command, basically. And we also do this other command, which is yay hyphen capital S to install a package, whatever package you prefer. So that's that. We can utilize that now. Um, now booting. Uh, and that, that concludes uh, two package management. So now we're moving on to booting. Uh, hardware, auto recognition. I think we're fine here. Don't worry about that. Microcode, we've already done that during the installation guide. You can go through other things if you prefer. Uh, retaining boot messages. Uh, feel free to go through this in your own time. Numlock activation. Uh, that's fine as well. You can. You can get like a, a thing that comes up on your screen that says numlocks activated. Um, I think that's what it does from memory, but not that much of a important thing. Okay, so now that we, we've done that, that's three booting done. Let's go through uh, four, graphical user interface. So this is the big step here. This allows you to upgrade yourself from a terminal to a big boy GUI, which is what I'm dealing with here with my uh, Arch install. I am personally using something called GNOME uh, right over here, my DE, my desktop environment. So uh, there, there is this thing also referred to as a window manager. Uh, so desktop environment, window manager, What's the key dif difference here? The key difference between a desktop environment and a window manager is a window manager is less extensible, but takes less resources. So it tends to consume less resources. Um, it doesn't have as many features, but is really efficient and it's, it's really solid, but it takes a while to build. It's essentially like uh, configuring a sort of uh, operating system in a way, but not really. Uh, and it takes a lot of time. Um, if you're familiar with this Reddit uh, place called r slash Unix uh, Pron, <laughs> r slash Unix, r slash Unix, oh my God, Unix, yeah. So this one here, uh, this houses a lot of window managers. So if you look here, there's a bunch here, there's a, there's a bunch going on. So they've fully customized their sort of setup here. This is a window manager. Uh, which window manager it is, is uh, it's a Fedora i3. So the window manager is i3, which is funny because I've also worked with i3 in the past. Uh, mine looks less fancy schmancy. But uh, let's see. Uh, and there are other sort of customizations as well. You can go through, feel free to look at this in your own time. But um, this is one of my examples. Um, where is it? Images. Okay, so um, here we go. This is an example of my setup. It was actually, that's a bad image. CPU RAM functionality. Okay, so we have term where, well, you can like customize this. You can put icons here as opposed to writing words. I was only doing this to train myself. Uh, you can also like uh, add uh, your own notification system and customize it so that it responds to scripts. And if you click up here, they will show the most uh, intensive applications, uh, CPU as well. Uh, yeah, it's very customizable. So this is also i3, uh, and yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty solid. But I'm going to keep this simple. We don't need to go through all of the baloney of uh, desktop en environments and window managers beyond this. 
you can choose. There's a lot of options to choose from. Arch Linux is extremely customizable. You can do a lot with it. So this is one of the joys. <laughs> okay, so I like to use GNOME. People like KDE, people like, like Cinnamon, they like uh, XFCE, but I like GNOME and I'm presently using GNOME because uh, window managers are, are way too, uh, they take too much time. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, okay, so we're going to be installing GNOME. How you do this is you select here, uh, you click on GNOME and then you just feel free to choose either GNOME or GNOME Extra. I'm going to be installing GNOME, get clear of the bloat. And if we need to, we'll install more things later. So, um, so, so it's yay now. So yay hyphen capital S and then it's GNOME. Oh, it does take a little while because we're installing a a complete GUI system. Essentially, this virtual machine will look very similar to how my desktop looks presently. And yeah, it's, it's pretty good. You're going to need to enable it. So as previously mentioned, it would be the command, uh, this command here. This is my personal terminal, not my, this is my desktop terminal, not my virtual machine. So just to be clear, we're not doing that yet. We're letting everything load in. Okay, so on my personal desktop, we're gonna minimize this other one. Um, the command would be sudo systemctl start, or I'm sorry, enable. Uh, it is, I think, GDM? GDM, so this command here. This would make it so that whenever your machine boots and starts up, one of the startup processes is going to be GNOME, and that is your GUI. So yeah, that'll just load up automatically. We're gonna postpone that though until this finishes. We've got a long ways to go, so. I drink for myself. Still pretty quick though, <clears throat> halfway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can also customize your GNOME session further. There's a thing called GNOME tweaks and you can add add-ins and things. Yeah, very customizable indeed. So, nearly done. Let's, let's run that command then, shall we? So, come on, come on. Pseudo system CTL. Any moment now. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, something something changed. Okay, could not install reason for package. Could not find a read package. Okay, I'm going to reboot the virtual machine. You get to see some real time troubleshooting. Okay, we're gonna be logging in as my user, which would also be your user. So whatever your username was. Okay, so I don't think GD, uh, GNOME's installed, but I'll still try the command anyway. So sudo systemctl start gdm. Oh, I don't know, put the command in. Oh, 
it's going. Uh, do we have liftoff? Oh, excellent. Okay, so this is what GNOME looks like. I just did the command start. Feel free to do enable. But uh, you also have the option to change from Wayland GNOME to Xorg. Personal preference. Xorg has uh, more features presently, uh, SSH stuff, while Wayland is more efficient, less code there. So, yeah. Okay, so we're in our session here. Um, as mentioned previously, feel free to utilize the command uh, sudo systemctl uh, enable gdm. This allows it to run at startup, as mentioned previously. So now uh, we're, we're exactly where we need to be. I'm very impressed. Okay, so we have this set up. I'm probably going to increase that to 19 uh, to 1080p apply so it looks slightly better on your screens keep changes come on I don't know if we can do it actually I might have had to give this virtual machine some extra oomph some extra video memory or something Okay, I don't think I like that. Um, I'm going to restart. Uh, reload. Yep, no, definitely did not like that. So let's uh, hard reset. You likely on your machine will not run into the same issue. Come on. Any moment. Okay. So now that we're here again, we're going to sudo systemctl enable GDM. And then in the future, it should come up at start. And also sudo systemctl start GDM. Okay. <clears throat> All right, log in with your account. We're going to leave it at the resolution it was previously, which was at 720p, I think, from memory. Oh, no, it's 1080p now. Sweet. Okay. Um, network Manager. So I think because we restarted our machine and we didn't enable Network Manager, we need to do that now. So feel free to do that. Uh, terminal. Okay. So sudo systemctl enable Network Manager. Yes. And we also need to sudo systemctl start network manager next time our computer starts we will uh, simply just turn it on and it will be connected to the internet so that's pretty solid that's we have a wired connection so that's good as well uh, feel free to change the appearance of your setup uh, my wallpaper is actually I, I run a dark setup I also have a different wallpaper which isn't here presently uh, uh, this one? No, this one. I'm a bit of a bland guy. <laughs> um, okay, so... Sharing. If you wanted to enable uh, file sharing, SSH, uh, or VNC, and other things, feel free to go through this process here. You can also do it through the terminal, but whatever helps you out, I guess. Um, if you're running sounds, you'll uh, you'll likely see something else like Pulse Audio or uh, Alza Utils. These are the sound systems. We'll go through that in a moment as well. Feel free to change the settings here in your own time. 
everything else checks out. Yep, so this is our system. We're running six cores, 50 gigs, eight gigs of storage, of uh, RAM. <laughs> and yeah, so that's pretty good. Okay, so now that we're all here, uh, we go back to the guide here. We're basically done with the GNOME page. We can close out of that. Uh, we're essentially done with this as well. Uh, Display Manager. So this is either Xorg or Wayland. As I mentioned previously, Wayland is less bloated. Uh, where is the mention of that actually? Was it Xorg here? Um, Wayland? Okay, well, this touches on Xorg and Wayland. Um, hold on. Oh, display server. Here we are. So, display server. Um, Xorg is a display server. It is, it is old. It is really old. Just take note of that. Uh, Wayland is the new, the new stuff, and it's less bloated, but has less features. So, keep note of that. Uh, and there's a lot of support growing for Wayland. It is supposed to take us into the future, eventually, of course. <laughs> So take note of that. Um, display manager. Yeah, we're basically done with this. So that's for graphical user interface. Okay, so power management five. Uh, these are steps you can take if you'd like to pursue these further. I don't really worry about this unless it's for laptops or if you want to stress about suspension and hibernation. I don't really worry about these presently. I don't have to worry about the uh, the power bills that much. <laughs> so, uh, six multimedia. So sound systems. We did speak about this slightly. Um, Alsa and uh, Pulse Audio, Pipewire, is the new thing that is really popular. Uh, I use Pipewire personally. Uh, there's a command here in your system, um, so it's yay hyphen capital S, uh, pipe wire pulse. This will install all your sound needs right there. Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, if you also have pulse audio present, you can maintain that, but pipe wire pulse is really popular. Um, let me see, remove pulse audio, unresolved package. Um, uh, let me see, so, yes, yes, yes. There's nothing wrong with pulse audio, I just use pipe wire pulse personally, so. Um, there's that lock synchronization. Uh, since you have a GUI now, you can probably just do that through here, but uh, I think it was time date CTL, which you can also use in the terminal to set that up. Um, DNS security for, uh, this is seven networking, by the way. We finished uh, six multimedia. Um, DNS security. I mainly handle my DNS security through my router, so that's not really relevant for me personally, but you can go through this in your own time. Um, setting up a firewall. Yeah, uh, there's universal firewall, UFW, or IP tables, which is underneath UFW. Um, feel free to go through this in your own time as well. It will likely come in handy if you're really security focused. If you're running a server, and providing services, you will likely need this on your host machine. And that's that. Uh, network file shares, that is something you would likely need if you're uh, doing some sort of NAS work, uh, network attached storage. So we're gonna skip that because it's just a simple virtual machine. Skip over. So seven networking, done. Yep. Uh, eight input devices. 
we've basically gone through this. If you need to worry about your laptop's touchpad, feel free to go through this process here. Um, optimization, yeah, improving performance, solid state drives. I have a lot of solid state drives and I never really have to worry about this 9.3 step here. Benchmarking, if you wanted to go through benchmarking, feel free to go through that as well. Improving performance, let's just take a quick gander. Uh, it all checks out. Feel free to look at this in your own time as well. I don't think we need to go through that right now. Uh, 10 system services. Yeah, this is all the basics. Setting up mail, uh, printing. The CUPS uh, application is really popular. Desktop search engines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so appearances 11. That's fine as well. Um, tab completion. If you want to update your command line, your, your terminal, you can add tab completions. When you press the tab button, you complete commands automatically. These are really good. I sometimes use these or it can um, provide you with a bunch of other commands that can go afterwards. I think I actually have that feature enabled. Yay. S. Yeah, and you can like tab through what you'd like to do. Um, aliases. It's a, it's a shorthand way to like run commands as well. You can tie things together through that. Um, it's really good with ZSH. So uh, alternative shells, bash additions. These are all personal preference. Feel free to go through uh, to go through twelve console improvements in your own time. But I think we've hit the conclusion. Yep. So right now you should have a terminal. You should have a user account made, and yeah, you should have network configured, and yeah, sound as well as well as privilege escalation so that you can do things as a fake root sort of with pseudo privileges, um, super user do. So yeah, I'm going to get out of this and we're in the voice transition. So thank you to, for joining me today. We've gone through the Arch Linux configuration walkthrough and if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments. But thus concludes today's video. Thanks again for joining me. And this concludes also the Arch Linux sort of uh, installation and configuration process. So have a great one. I will see you in another video, which we will likely be going through how to set up a server or services. That'll be fun. I'll catch you in the next video. See you.